Today, we're going to talk about gallbladder. Most people don't think about their gallbladder until it's too late. Usually, once you start thinking about it, it's time to remove it. But what if we have a little bit of a conversation before we start removing body parts? Gallbladder surgery is one of the most common surgeries in this country. And there are times without questions that you need to remove your gallbladder. But sometimes we're a little bit too quick in removing it. And that's because there's never a conversation of why things got so bad. Why does your gallbladder even cause you pain? Why do you have stones? If we had the conversation, maybe we wouldn't be so quick to remove it. There's also not enough of a conversation of what life is like after we remove the gallbladder because it's not so easy. Although we don't need it to stay alive, it still has some side effects and we need to talk about that. So for those of you who are not sure and you have some gallbladder issues, this is gonna be a great talk for you. For those of you who don't even know if you have a gallbladder issue, let's get ahead of it. And for those of you who've had your gallbladder removed, this is a good opportunity to learn about some supplements that might help you along. So wherever you are, join the conversation. I'm gonna jump in and I'm gonna to talk to you about what the gallbladder does first. And yes, this talk is gonna get technical because my talks always do, but you listeners are amazing. You're super smart. And I think you actually appreciate it when we dig deep. So let's go. The gallbladder is a small pear-shaped organ that sits right under your liver. And its entire job is just to store bile. That's its job. The liver makes bile, which is a digestive juices. It helps you digest fat. And then it stores it in the gallbladder. So this is how it works. You eat something fatty. Doesn't matter if it's good fat or bad fat. You eat something fatty. That meal hits the small intestine. And the small intestine says, hey, gallbladder, we need some bile so we can digest this. And the gallbladder says, sure, here you go. Here's some bile. And the small intestine uses it to break down the fat and all is well with the world. And if everything works well, you don't even know that it's working. And bile is super important because without it, we can't process fat, but also it excretes some of the waste from our body. So when we're done digesting, some of the bile gets excreted, some of, and the rest of the bile goes back in the system, ready for the next meal and round and round it goes. Gallbladder does its job silently and many people don't even know that it exists in their bodies. And that's a good thing. You don't want to know that it exists because when you're aware of it, that usually means you feel pain. So now let's talk about why would the gallbladder hurt? Because if we understand this, we can start having the conversation of whether or not we need to get rid of it. So why does it hurt? Generally, this has to do with something called sludge and stones. And sludge is exactly what you think it is. Sludge is it's sand and goo that lands on the bottom of the gallbladder. And over time, that sludge can crystallize and turn into a stone. People can have sludge and stones in their bodies for years and not know about it. Usually you find out about it accidentally. You go for a chest X-ray, you go for an ultrasound, and they say, hey, by the way, you have sludge and stones. And you're like, okay, great, what do I do about it? And usually you'll be advised, well, it's not causing you any issues, so why don't we just wait and see and see where it goes? Some people have gallstone sludge and it is causing them pain, but not constant, the pain comes and goes. Now, the reason that is, remember, uh, the gallbladder's job is to uh, release bile. The gallbladder releases bile and everything is fine. But sometimes the stones and the, and the sludge take a ride with the bile, and we don't like that because the bile goes through a small duct. Think of it like a small straw and there's no room for sludge, and there's definitely no room for stones. So the stones and the sludge go into the straw, and the straw's like, uh-uh, there's no room for you, and that causes pain. So if it doesn't get stuck there, that pain will be temporary. The fancy name for that is biliary colic. So it'll go something like this. You have a greasy meal, a fatty meal, and then about 30 minutes later, you'll have pain. You might even go to the emergency room. They'll give you some medication, and they'll say, you're good, the pain goes away, you feel fine. And then you go back to your PCP or your GI and they say, yeah, you have sludge or gallstones. And you know what? Maybe we should remove the gallbladder just in case. It's already causing you some trouble. Let's just get rid of it so it doesn't become a bigger issue in the future. And then there are scenarios where the stones get stuck, stuck. And that's a big, big deal. And depending on where it gets stuck, it can cause some serious issues. Sometimes it creates backup in the gallbladder. Sometimes it creates an entire systemic issues. And sometimes it affects the pancreas. In these instances, 
there's no question that the gallbladder needs to go because otherwise you could have serious issues, including death, which we don't want that. But notice the conversation tends to be about when to remove the gallbladder. Some, ga some gallbladders get, let's wait and see, and then we'll remove it. Some gallbladders say, hey, it's causing you some trouble. Let's remove it. And then, of course, there's those that absolutely have to be removed. But we never hear about why. Why did this happen? Why does my gallbladder hurt? Um, and where did the sludge come from? Where, why did it become a stone? In all my years of practice, I've never had a patient come to me and say, hey, I just been to my GI. They said I have sludge and stones. And they gave me a whole list of lifestyle modifications that I can do so that I can avoid surgery. I've never heard that. Instead, I hear, hey, they said I have some issues and it might cause me more issues in the future, so let's just get rid of it. That tends to be the conversation. So we, let's get to the root of why this happens in the first place. Why do some people develop sludge and stones? Now, yes, there is some family predisposition. Oh, my mom has it, my grandma has it, my aunt has it. That just means you're more likely to have it, but it doesn't mean you have to have it. It just means you have a tendency towards it. And then there's some demographics that are more likely to get it, tends to hit women more, tends to hit women who are overweight more around the age 40. Pregnancy can trigger it. But those are just statistics. Certainly men have gallbladder issues, and certainly people of all shapes and sizes have gallbladder issues. It's just something that's discussed, but there is something that triggers it, and we need to talk about what triggers it. So let's talk about sludge. Why do we form sludge to begin with? The reason we form sludge is because remember, the gallbladder's job is to push out bile every time you eat fat. It's supposed to be alert and active. Oh, there's a meal. Let's go. I'm ready. Here's some bile. A sludge is found when the gallbladder is a little underactive and it doesn't empty out. So some bile hangs back in the gallbladder and now it starts to get sludgy. Mucus collects and other debris collects and it just starts to get gooey on the bottom. So what do you think can cause the gallbladder to be sluggish and not empty? If you watch any of these episodes, you know, what a surprise, it's your diet, things that you eat. It turns out that insulin resistance is a big contributor for sluggish gallbladder. Yep, I talk about insulin resistance every week because it causes a lot of issues, not just diabetes. Studies have shown that people with insulin resistance have an underactive gallbladder, which will cause sludge, which will cause stones, which will cause pain. The other thing is the bile itself can be better quality or less quality. And the food that we eat goes into our bile. So if our nutrition is off, our liver produces thicker bile that kind of sits on the bottom. If we eat like a lot of fried foods, you have thicker bile. So you're going to have thick bile in a sluggish gallbladder and surprise, you have sludge. P.S. Any of you who are having hypothyroid or Hashimoto's issues, guess what? If your thyroid is not well managed, and we did a whole episode on Hashimoto's, make sure to check it out. It will slow down your gallbladder. So make sure that's on point. So basically, all the things we talk about every week, not eating right, not having things in balance will affect how active our gallbladder is. But when was the last time you heard about that? Never. So you walk around having this lazy gallbladder for years. You don't even know it's lazy because it's not causing you any problem. And the sludge bu builds up and the stones get created. And over time, they can crystallize and become more stones. And as we mentioned, some of the stones just hang out there for years causing no issues. It's only when they get stuck that gets us in trouble. So conventional medicine really is, how do we treat the gallbladder? We wait for the sludge and the stones to cause a problem, and then we remove the gallbladder. But we don't actually talk about why it's happening and how can we reverse it. So you might say, who cares, E? Why are you spending your whole episode talking about gallbladder? Just remove it. We can live without it. It's not even a big deal. What's the issue? We don't need it to live. And the issue is that there are several health issues and symptoms that can happen after the gallbladder is removed. And that's called post-cholecystectomy syndrome. So post-cholecystectomy syndrome means life is not always awesome once the gallbladder is removed. And let me tell you why. Remember, the liver makes bile and bile sits in the gallbladder. And the gallbladder only releases it 
as needed. But now you've removed the gallbladder. So now the liver still makes the bile and it just goes into your intestines whenever. It doesn't have a trigger. It doesn't have a, a space to be held. It just goes out whenever. So that's problem number one, that the bile comes out whenever it wants. Bile, problem number two is that the bile is a little bit different because when it gets stored in the gallbladder, it also gets changed a little bit, concentrated. So now without the gallbladder, we have a different kind of bile going into the system anytime it wants. And that causes issues. Some people have trouble digesting fat. Some people will have a lower vitamin A, D, E, and K because you need bile to metabolize it. Some people will have chronic diarrhea called bile acid diarrhea. Some people have heartburn, gas, indigestion. Some people will still have pain on the right side where the gallbladder is removed and still have nausea and vomiting. And this new bile now that's in your system is going to affect your microbiome. It can cause an imbalance between the good and bad bacteria. If you guys don't know about dysbiosis, make sure you watch my episode. These bad bacteria cause inflammation, which causes leaky gut, which causes systemic inflammation, which can trigger autoimmunity. So you might say, wow, you know, ever since my gallbladder is removed, my, that area feels better. But ever since then, I haven't been the same. My autoimmunity has flared up. This is one of the reasons why. Because when you remove body parts, there is an effect. Surprise, surprise. And some people have to be on lifelong medications after gallbladder. They need antispasmodics because they have spasms. They might need bile acid sequestrants to help with the diarrhea. People with GERD will need medication for that. Some people will need digestive enzyme supplements to help break down fats. And some people actually will need a new surgery for some duct remnants. And sometimes there's still even stones. And to be fair, there are some people who are fine after gallbladder and actually say they never felt better. But that's just because we remove the gallbladder and the sludge and wherever it got stuck. But the actual issues was never been addressed. So oftentimes new issues arise eventually. Wouldn't it be amazing if we could avoid the sludge and the stones in the first place? Wouldn't it be great if once we have sludge or stones, there was something we could do to fix it, dissolve it, reverse it, and prevent surgery? Um, obviously there is. So here are the things we need to do. If you have a thyroid issue, treat it. It will affect your gallbladder. If you have a hormone imbalance, many people who complain of irregular periods, PMS, they have estrogen dominance, that affects your gallbladder. If you have PCOS, that can affect your gallbladder. Change your nutrition. If you're eating high carbs, fried foods, all the things that you already know are unhealthy and make you insulin resistant or diabetic, they're affecting your gallbladder. Switch to an anti-inflammatory diet. Help make quality bile. Drink a lot of water. Your bile is 95% water. You need water to help it along. Eat fiber like celery, green leafy veggies, beets, ginger, carrots, basil. Take a supplement called ox bile. This will help if you're not producing enough bile. It helps eject bile. It could also help make your bile thin as well as break down some sludge. So ox bile is, is pretty magical. And then other supplements, let me put it here, are milk thistle, dandelion, uh, globe artichoke, and taurine. All of them help make quality bile. And magnesium also can help the gallbladder contract. And good old apple cider vinegar and some other herbs can help dissolve gallstones. Now, a word of caution here, please. If you're already experiencing symptoms, don't run and do this. Because the last thing we want is to activate your gallbladder when you already have, you know, something blocking or obstructing. Now, always, 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 if you have a gallbladder issue, don't self-diagnose. Find out what's going on. Always go to the GI. If you're obstructed, you might absolutely need surgery. Do not mess around. But if you're in that wait and see and maybe considering surgery just in case, then this is a good time to consider changing your nutrition, taking the right supplements, and actually reversing the issue instead of just removing organs. So remember, don't run to remove your gallbladder if you don't have to. Just know that that's the only conversation that exists in con conventional medicine. If you have to, of course, there's, there's no... There's, no debate. Sometimes it's an emergency. But if you're in that wait and see time, consider, you know, changing your diet and using the, the supplements and reversing the issue. And yes, this is a lot. And of course, you're always welcome to work with us. We can help you along. You can find us at the new method on just about every single platform except for Twitter because I talk too much. 
And you could also send us an email uh, um, at the new method and the new method.com. Um, and we look forward to working with you because you always knew there's a better way. 